Hi guys, and welcome back to day 30 of Inktober. So today is the second to last piece of Inktober, and I cannot believe how fast this month has felt. Like, it feels like it's been maybe two weeks of me working on it, but it's been almost a month. And that is so amazing to me that I was able to stick with it for almost all of the days and that I'm still feeling this excited about it. But I do still have uh, one piece to do today since today is the 31st and this is when I'm doing the voiceover but I actually did this piece yesterday so I still have one more to do today and I'll get that video up to you tomorrow and in that video I'm going to talk a lot about what I want to do with this channel and what I want to do after Inktober because I feel like after this huge event of Inktober and putting all these pieces out there I feel so recharged as far as what I want to put on my channel what types of videos so I'm ready to take a step into making my channel a lot better than it ever was and putting more stuff that I think you guys will be more interested in. I'll be really excited about working on and new new stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for tomorrow's Inktober because I am going to be talking a lot about that and asking for your guys' input and opinions and ideas for things you'd like to see. And I think it's going to be really exciting. But as far as today, today I wanted to do a piece that was a vampire piece and I, I don't think I've really done a vampire piece yet and I wanted to do one that wasn't just like a stagnant character I wanted to have two characters interacting so for this one I absolutely took uh, reference for it so some of my pieces a lot of my pieces I just find reference off of the internet stuff that works really well for what I want if there's a particular hand that I need that position for or a type of hair or fashion or clothing, I will look that up and that's usually my best bet. But when it comes to much more complicated things like this or very specific poses, even if they're kind of simple, if I have something in mind that I know I want to do, I will make the references myself. So this one, since they are two characters and they're having this very specific pose, I knew that I wasn't gonna find something that was exactly what I wanted. And if I did find something, and I reproduced it, it would look way too close to the original reference that I was working off of. And that is something that I do make sure that I'm doing. If I'm using reference that belongs to other people, I am only using it as figuring out how the hand is actually going to be shaped or getting something to jump off from. So that if you were to look at the two, you would kind of see a resemblance, but it wouldn't be like, oh, you drew this thing and now it's a drawing, but it is that reference, if that makes sense. But that's a little bit on the tangent side but for this one it was actually uh, really great because what I did was I just turned my webcam around so it's facing the rest of my room and we just clicked record and we took a bunch of different poses in just quick succession while it was recording so I didn't have to go and take any pictures or have any uh, anything like that it was just all just stream of motion where I could get a ton down really really fast and then when I was looking back over the footage, I was able to really pick what type of pose I wanted and what gesture I wanted it from wanted from it and what hand I wanted because there was one reference that I really liked the shape of our bodies and how that was looking, but the hand itself just wasn't quite right the way that I had my hand. So I looked at a different reference for that. And basically it's just, it's really great to be able to take your own reference and to be able to work from that because from the very beginning to the very end, it's something that you completely control and you have everything within your grasp as far as how it turns out. There was a long time where in high school when I needed reference, I would scour the internet and sometimes I would have this very specific pose or concept in mind and I could not find it anywhere. I remember that frustration of searching and searching and never being able to find something. And it never really dawned on me to just take my own reference. And now it just seems very, very easy of a fix is that I can just take reference of my own hand or myself taking those poses. And it really does help as far as how good your pieces look. When you're looking at reference and you're getting that realism, those elements in there or like overlapping shapes that's one thing that I struggle with is really figuring out how things will over overlap and how they will um, look when they're combined and how hands will look when they're touching each other or even just like in this piece how her arm is wrapping around his back I would never really have been able to picture the way that that curve would look and how her hand would slightly disappear behind it 
And when you have reference to work off of, you can see all these details that you had no idea would be there. And once you add those, it looks amazing and it looks much more realistic. So I would highly recommend finding reference and even taking your own reference because it actually is really easy as long as you just have some sort of recording device and yourself. But a little bit specifically about this piece, when I started doing the inking, this is actually the second pass at it. I tried to do one earlier and it kind of derailed itself really quickly. There was an area that I kind of messed up on and then I tried to fix it by just like blocking it in with black to make it look like it was a shadow. And basically I think that I kind of psyched myself out with that one because it was a little bit of a failure and then needing to start all over again on another perfectly clean sheet of watercolor paper. It was a little bit daunting and when I started working on it I felt really nervous and I felt like I kind of had lost the rhythm of how to get it and how to deal with this brush and how to get the line work that I wanted. So at the very beginning of when I was starting to do the line work I was really struggling. My confidence of how I was using my brush was just gone. Like when I was working on it it felt like it was this foreign object that I just wasn't acquainted with anymore and it was really hard to get into it and to feel good about it because I was doing a little bit of it I'm like no no this doesn't look good and I had this voice in the back of my head saying no it doesn't look good you need to stop you need to start over you need to rehash what's going on in the sketch there's just something wrong and then I realized I need to turn that off I need to turn that voice off and I need to look at what is there and I started just removing myself and trying to look at it very objectively rather than in this weird state where I already felt like I wasn't able to put it down the way I wanted it to. So I took a minute and I just looked at it and I studied it and I'm like, what parts are actually bugging me? What things can I fix? And what things are working well? And that really helped me to just figure out and get my footing back as far as what did I like and when I started figuring that out I realized well it's not a, it's not this terrible messed up thing it's that I'm telling myself it's actually something that does have potential and I just need to keep working on it and I need to get back into the rhythm of how I like to create pictures I like to build up the lines I like to add more details and more strokes that show the shape and show the form that it is creating. So once I took that moment to just go through and figure out, okay, what isn't working? How can I fix it? What is working? How can I continue that? That just gave me a lot more confidence moving forward and getting the brush strokes back and getting the shapes that I wanted. And I felt this huge like weight lifted off my shoulders once I let myself get rid of that negativity from the beginning and just work on it from the way that I like to work on it and that's just building it up and finding ways to fix it. But for the values for this one it was pretty simple. I already knew what I wanted to do with this one. I wanted the background to be dark and I wanted him to be darker and I wanted her to be super light so I wanted this whole piece to be very high contrast so she would just stand out and be very clear and I wanted him to disappear a little bit in some areas with the background because I did want him to feel a little bit more like a shadow and more mysterious and I didn't need him to be in complete clarity. I didn't need it to be so that when you looked at it he was an immediate and clear read. I did actually want him to have some more mysterious elements to him. And that's something that I've been beginning to learn about is that not everything needs to be front and center or very clear or perfectly rendered. Some stuff like this, it should be something that's more obscured or less refined and it does help with the overall mood or the idea that I'm going for. And that's something that I'm starting to get the hang of and I think this one, he might be a little bit lost in some areas where I think that towards the top I would have liked there to be a little bit more contrast between him and the background so that you could see his head a little bit more clearly and then as you went down he faded a little bit more like I talked about like I wanted so I think that it could have been executed better but I am glad that I'm starting to include these type of techniques where not everything that I'm putting down needs to be absolutely clear where I can play a lot more with what is the focal point and what areas are not and what things can be first 
a first read and what things can be second read and what things can be hidden and seen only after you're really studying the piece. And this is the part where I'm trying to give it a little bit more depth to the background, a little bit like I mentioned, where I wanted him to pop out a little bit more at the top and then blend in more in the bottom. So I started going in with a darker wash over the background. And this part is a technique that I use a lot with ink washes, and I've used it a ton throughout Inktober. And that's, it's actually really simple to get really smooth, nice looking gradients that blend into an ink wash that you already have. So for this, I already had that relatively flat wash behind it. And what I did was I took my brush and I'm using a flat brush for this one. And I went in with a darker ink wash that I had and I blocked in an area where I wanted right above her dress for it to be really dark. So I put that in there and then I textured it up towards the top. So it wasn't the smooth line, but it was, kind of flicking out and there were areas where there's some and areas that there weren't. And then I just dipped the brush into the water really quickly. So there's still a lot of ink on it, but also water. So it's a shade lighter. And I basically do that same step as I did with that initial ink wash. And I just overlap it a little bit and build it up and play around with it a little bit. So they start blending together. And then I go in with the brush and I just rinse it all off. So it's just the water. And then I do that same step one more time. And then to finish it off so it really just blends really seamlessly in, I take a little bit of paper towel or toilet paper and dab at that very edge so that it just really has this very smooth look to it and you can blend it out into what you have behind it. And this is a really controllable way of having a gradient like this. And the blood on this piece is actually a combination of two different fountain pen inks. I have Noodler's Red Black and Private Reserve orange crush, I believe. And then I added just a little bit of water because these are water soluble, which is great because they take water really well and you can water them down so you can have really beautiful ink washes. And with those combined, it ended up being this really nice, bright blood color that I loved. And I wanted that to be this really saturated point in the piece. Uh, but then I did end up doing a ink wash with that same value, except for added a lot more water for her hair so that she had this nice orange red color for her hair. But that is pretty much everything for today's Inktober. As usual, this original is available at my shop. So if you wanted a chance to pick up some original art, this is a great chance for that. But there is a link right in the corner of this video. And there's also a link down in the description that'll take you to my art shop where you can check this original out. And there's a couple other originals, I believe, that are still left and a lot of other prints and buttons and things. So yes, if you'd like to pick this one up, it is available. And yeah, like I said, that's pretty much it for today, but don't forget to check in tomorrow for the last Inktober and for all the other videos because I have a lot of stuff that I'm ready to put out there and show you guys new stuff, exciting stuff. So I by no means decide to slack off after Inktober. There's going to be a ton of new videos and I'm just going to keep putting them up there and putting a lot out there because... That's one thing that I loved about Inktober was the fact that I was able to put up a new video every single day. I love that. So I'm going to keep that up. I'm going to probably not every single day, but I'm definitely going to keep up with producing a lot of videos and putting up a lot of content for you guys. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the last Inktober.